three, two, one. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of the M1 Gear channel. We're actually getting ready for a green screen shoot tomorrow and it has a teleprompter. And our new teleprompter showed up. So we thought, well let's take a minute, put it together, show you guys as we put it together for the first time. And then we'll be able to use it tomorrow on our production. Which is exciting because we have a pretty old teleprompter for iCan we've been using well over a decade. It's really held up. It's a reason why we wanted to go with ICANN again. So today we have the ICANN Elite Pro TK model. So we're going to assemble it here together for the first time. So pardon any flubberations that we might have as we figure it out. So this is the glass assembly. And I suppose we should start with what the instructions say. Now I did look through these a little bit. And well, it takes you about 30 seconds to read the whole thing from cover to cover. Uh, there's missed opportunity here, a back cover and a whole page where more information could be included because the instructions are there but they could use a little more detail specifically what these extra screws are for. These little tiny ones, I don't know what this is for. I assume it's just extra screws and they've been nice because they found several of these screws all in the same size and thread and if you take one of they, these out they match so I'm assuming it's uh, extra screws which is nice that they include that but that would be lovely information in the instruction manual. So we we'll take this and on the bottom of this mounting plate there's a little tiny notch here right on the bottom if you can see that and this little notch lines up on the bottom of the eye can. It shows you how you know, can't go any further. And if you're flush here on the top of the glass assembly, right? And then your screws on the bottom are also lined up, right? And there's a couple of screws, a couple of screws. Tilt it for this side. There we go. Fits nice and flush there. No problem. So. I'm assuming you use these larger mounting screws. They fit well into this recessed holes here on the top. I can say it's good craftsmanship right off the top. I can tell that. The machining screws fit in nicely like they were made for each other. All right. Oh, yeah, that's very stable. No concerns about that. And this will tilt forward. This is the glass here that we're building here. You're seeing what's going to happen here. Now the next step it says is to attach the large tablet holder and the extension rod. Well here we've, it came, actually came with this extension rod. Now it keeps mentioning this extension rod and it's kind of small, it's this tiny little piece right here. This extra piece, you can see it's even held on by this screw right here. There's, this is an extension rod. You can take this off if you have a smaller iPad that you're using. We're using an iPad Pro, so we're going to want that extension piece there. It came mounted, uh, so we're going to just keep it there. Let's put on the iPad supports first. Make it a little easier here for our build. Whee. Now, they give you way too many options here. What am I looking at here? What am I, why is there so many? They only give me four. Okay, if I get four things to choose from, I'm assuming these are going to go on the inside here on the rubber. Better make sure I put those on last in the four I, I decide on. Well, let's grab our iPad that we're going to be using here. Look at that magic. This is the back, so I'll probably slide it into the back, right? Well, so we'll use one of these. Try, we'll put a hook one back there. Why not? This thing's not super wide. They give you a lot of options here. So no matter what size of iPad or device, it doesn't have to be an iPad, that you use um, to make the screen to be your monitor for the teleprompter, they give you lots of options here so it will hold it and support it. It's nice that they include those. You get one thumb screw here, 
puts on, and that's pretty slick. This looks like carbon fiber, injection mold. It's got some nice slots fit into it smoothly. Good little idea there, guys. All right, and then I'm gonna put a, so I can pop it out easily, I'm gonna put a straight one here. I'm gonna go with the straight edge, 90 degree from my front. Just find the thread and it slips right on. Not. All right, and then how's that work in there? Oh yeah, plenty of space. That can shrink up, that can shrink up. Okay, and then I just need two more on the sides. Might as well just make sure I pick the, the longer ones here. Make it a little more versatile in the future as long as it's gonna fit here. Yep, no problem. All right, put those. And as you can see, there's lots of slot options in the top of this mounting plate. So it certainly looks like whatever screen you decide you want to use, this will be a versatile unit for it. Slide that open. Fits in nicely. Perfect. Look at that. And I picked it so I could... Now I put three there, right? All I have to do is probably loosen this one and you could probably slide it right out. Nice. Now on the bottom of our iPad support plate, um, there's a triangle. And you can see that that's going to line up with the notch on the bottom here of this. Right, there's a little notch right there. So that's just going to line up, as you can see, with this. Flip that over. And then they say to use this nice thumb screw here. They provide. Now, it does not say what to do with this washer. I feel it actually goes in here because it has a little bit of a rock to it when I was playing around with it. See, without that washer, look at the looseness in this plate. It's, I've tightened it here as tight as I can, screwed in all the way, and it's loose. And, you know, yes, you could put your iPad there, but, but that just doesn't really give you very good confidence. And it doesn't mention anywhere in the instructions what to do about that or that it should do that and I certainly wouldn't be happy with it if it did that but that's what this little washer here is for now as you see I'm putting it on the top making sure the triangle goes towards me towards the glass and then the thumb screw I'm using right there into the top line up line up okay there we go it's nice that it's got a little bit of a slot there so you could adjust the, the distance you need easily enough. And now, look at that. When I tighten it up, there's no wiggle in that at all. So that one little washer, very important add-on. All right, here we go. On the side here, there's these little thumb screws. And on the bottom of the glass, and you see, as soon as I loosen it, the glass tilts forward. Now that's looking more like a teleprompter. You can see the iPad's gonna go here, the glass is gonna be held up here, and your camera's assembly is all gonna be back behind that. So let's do that. We're gonna just lock this glass down right there in the angle. Oh, nice. All right, I just realized that these, these are ratchet set. These lift up, drop down. That's awesome. Nice little feature there. Position them out of the way. Probably angled it too much, but at least it's out of the way for now. So here on the base plate assembly, we have a couple of rod holders. Let me loosen those up. All 
All right, so there we go. This is the base plate assembly now with some of the rods connected. All right. Very sturdy. Ooh. Yep, no problem. Here we go. That just connects in right like that. Also looks like these little screws here on the side are ratcheted. It have to be ratcheted because the glass is so it's so tight right here. There would be one point I'd make in the improvement of this is have a different type of ratchet system here. This is kind of difficult to get to and you know it's something you're going to have to break down every time, right? Like if you're going to fit this down into the case, you have to disassemble the rails from the glass. And it's great that it fits down in that small case, but that's one spot I would say could be easily improved on, but it's really not that big of a deal. Fits in nicely. Let's see what that take 30 seconds, really not a big deal. I think that might be my biggest complaint of this whole build was that one little screw right there. And that's really minor. Yeah, we're still setting up for tomorrow. <laughs> One of the reasons I wanted to get this particular model was the quick release plate here for your camera. I really like that. Um, the older models were much more difficult to try to, to get things assembled. I really like this one having this built into it. And it's a pretty nice system. It's got a safety switch here on the lever. So that's the locking lever and there's a safety on that which I pull forward and then it very easily comes loose. And then that is even that just loosens the plate, right? And then on this side, on this side here, on, there's this button, and that actually releases the plate fully. Here is a little backstop, which I could use if I have a smaller DSLR camera. Oh, for the bigger camera we're going to be using, we'll actually need to take this off here, and they've provided the tool to do so. Now that we have everything on there, the last bit we need is our hood. One of the most important parts of a teleprompter is you have your glass that you can see. It goes one way and you can reflect onto. And then this allows the camera to not have any light coming through the assembly of the glass and keep just everything coming through the glass only and that will keep the reflection clean and you won't see any of the iPad screen in your shot. Now, this iCan hood, this is really sharp, I gotta say. This is really soft. I just wanna quote Eddie Murphy, what is that, velvet? And check this out, and unfolds, right? It folded up really nice, fit in the case. Two quick zippers. One on each side, quick, bang. And then there you go, you're already set. It's already built. It looked fumbly for a second, but then you two zippers and it's it, ready to go, right? And there's my hood. Now, this hole here that you see on the back, right? This is actually for this whole unit. And I could take this off and, and put this on it. Uh, all you have to do to connect this and you don't have to use that part. Look at that, you can hear it click. See, and then it just hangs out the back as opposed to nicely out in the front if I were to put it there and set, set it on the iPad, right? We'll probably do that before we roll. And you can see now that the camera is going to sit right there. And our iPad slide right into place. Like that. There you go. So our background's changed, and I originally was planning on showing you how to put the camera here on the teleprompter out on location the day we uh, did the unboxing. And well, we got really busy on that setup day, and we just never got to do any behind the scenes stuff. We've been editing this video and decided we needed that piece still. It's been six months because we've just been busy with client work, but 
Still wanted to make sure we got it finished up for you all. So we're gonna finish the build now and show you how the camera mounts on this. And I'm gonna tell you my review of this unit because uh, it turned out pretty good, I gotta say. I've gone ahead and put our tripod plate onto the base plate of the teleprompter here. And it went on really easy. There's a lot of screws here at the top for different sizes. No problem getting everything lined up. Um, we've already had the rails here. I'm gonna go ahead and just slide that in there now that I have it on, and it just locks right in. Now, this thing has a lot of weight on the forward momentum, so I, I prefer to bring it back a little bit, uh, kind of to the back of the head of the tripod, just to take the weight a little bit farther to the back and balance it out a little bit better there. Go ahead and lock that into the tripod head. And I find it's very sturdy. And then we just take on our hood. It's easier to put the hood on first than the camera. And you'll see why in a second. So this just clips on right, with the magnets, nice and easy. I think that's super sweet. Now this bottom flap, there's a hole in it, as I mentioned earlier. You can put this hole here, right, through this contraption, and so it runs out the front. Well, that's kind of a challenge during setup, and it slows down the setup a lot and breakdown because you have to do this threading process, and it's really not necessary. I find I just tuck it underneath here. I just tuck it between the bar underneath it, and that's just fine. It gets it out of the way. It's creating this blank space back here, right? It's still covering it up where our iPad goes in. We've been using the iPad. Uh, this is an 11-inch Pro. Um, we picked it up used, right? It doesn't have to be super powerful. It doesn't have to have a lot of space because it's only going to run one app, right? This main purpose is just to be this teleprompter. And it just slides right in there like that. Then you can take these little clamps on the bottom. And as you can see, I'm not even looking at them. I can find them and they can slide in, locks that iPad in there nice and firm, so easy. And then you can kind of just loosen one up if you need to take it out. And so you can see that this backspace here, right, it's covering it and it's blocking the reflection there that we need for the camera. So I, I find I don't need to thread it through it. It does slow down the build a little bit. It's not that challenging, but one more thing to just quickly do. Okay, let's throw a camera on here. Boop, boop. Just got a C70 here right now. We're just gonna put this on here just cause that's what I had sitting around. We're already using a couple cameras for filming and a couple out in the field. So wanted to show you what it looked like with a smaller camera as well. So this kit comes with a mounting plate that you put on your camera and then you can slide that into the main bracket here of the unit. And I really like this feature because it you no extra screws or anything. It just makes a quick release. Pop it on and off. Uh, it's even something you could put on before you got on site if you wanted. I also really like that this is a two-sided plate. Can you see that here? That this goes both ways. So it doesn't matter which way I mount this, it's going to slide into this plate without a problem. I think that's really nice. So I'm just going to put this in here, uh, slide it in, and then we'll go through the rest of the features. So it lines up pretty good. Sometimes I find it easier than others, but you just get the two grooves lined up and it slides right in. There's a lock on it so it doesn't fall out. It's pretty solid, right? You can see over here on the back, so there's a release lever. Slides right out, no problem. And you do not need to push it to get the camera back in here. Just clicks right in. Little trick here on this handle that can be a little frustrating sometimes is you can't, you have to push the button to unlock it and it's right up against it, right? So you, you just kind of got to get your thumb wedged in there a little bit, right? And you can find it, but sometimes it is a little hard to grab, you know? Sometimes, you know, you can get with your fingers and that's a little easier because you have to pull it out, right? It's to, it goes out like this to release and you have to do that when it locks. So you just kind of got to get your thumb back there. It's not too bad. Now that the camera is mounted securely, I can put the hood around it. So I just grab this, and this is one of the reasons why you want to put this on first, because otherwise muscling this around the lens is kind of frustrating. <laughs> and it just fits right around it. You can cinch it up if you like. Uh, I tend to keep it open so I can adjust my focus, and then I just pull it back here. 
Um, and then you might want to put the glass and the lens pretty close together. You got to make sure that the lens is past this barrier here, right? You see? So I'll just fit this around it real quick. And then I prefer to slide it forward from the rails to get it close to the glass. It also helps put the weight then farther back on the tripod and not so much forward weight on it. And then you just lock this in here, these rails in here. So that's pretty much the teleprompter built, right? Camera mounted, hood around it, iPad in front of it. Look at that, right? You can adjust this by angles. Um, we find sometimes you might need to move these, take these off uh, so you can adjust to the iPad. We have a little remote we found that works pretty good. So this is the teleprompter software we use. It's called Teleprompter Plus. I uh, find it works pretty good. We have a lot of control over it and um, we can increase the font size, uh, speed it up, slow it down, all those fun things that we need to use out in the field. And if somebody says it's crooked, right, you can just adjust it. Now, this setup works great indoors. We did find it a little bit challenging outdoors with the uh, iPad to be able to see the screen. In direct sunlight, it is about impossible to see. We had to put some shade over the unit um, when we were out in the field to be able to see the screen. Um, but most of the time, especially in an indoor setting, we haven't found anybody uh, that has not been able to see this because it has a nice big screen. Even we've been kind of far away, uh, we've been able to get really good results from people, especially um, people who have not been used to teleprompter. They all say they can see it clearly. We must have run through over a hundred teachers uh, doing a, a piece for a school district using this piece of equipment. So it's really worked out great. I definitely recommend this product. It packs up nice and easy into the case. It comes out quickly and sets up very quickly. I've showed a couple of the team members how to set it up. Normally once or twice they got it themselves and they can kind of run with it on their own, right? It's a, it's a really easy to use and understand piece of equipment. Um, the iPad control works great. One thing I do recommend is making sure that you get yourself a, a Bluetooth keyboard because typing on the iPad is really frustrating. And if somebody says, oh, I need to change that word. Can we tweak this one line? It's so much easier to just be able to click on that, type your word or two off to the side, and you know, you've you made your adjustments quickly. It's a lot easier than using that touchpad on the, on the iPad itself. Um, you don't have to have that. That's just a Bluetooth feature uh, that we use. Take advantage and speed things up on set. So what do you think of the ICANN TK Pro? We've been using it for about six months now uh, between when we filmed the beginning of this video here and the end, but uh, I think it's a really great unit. It's easy to set up. It fits well in its case. It breaks down in no time. Definitely five stars. And by the way, hashtag not sponsored. This is just... Thanks for watching another episode of the M1 Gear channel, everybody. M1 Studios is a video agency based in Detroit, Michigan, but we are a national firm and we take a few minutes of our day when we can to show you some behind the scenes like the unboxing of this particular model, uh, the assembly, and then how to use it here with the review tied together, right? So we're not sponsored by anybody. This is just the equipment we're using out in the field every day for our clients and we just like to share it with you and show you what's working for us out there in the field. So thanks for watching the M1 Gear channel. Make sure you like and subscribe and you'll see more videos from the M1 team. Take care everybody, till next time. Bye-bye.